by default, core data will add any data you want. But this can get messy really quickly, particularly if you know that having two or more pieces of data at the same time doesn't make sense. For example, let's say you're storing contact by an email address. Having two or three or more contacts with the same email address shouldn't happen. It should not be allowed. Core data helps us solve this using constraints, a way of saying there's one attribute here, constrained, so it must always be unique. We can then go ahead and write all the objects we want, unique or otherwise. When we say save the core data, it'll go ahead and resolve the duplicates for us and remove them all so only one piece of data remains. Even better, if there was data there already that clashes with our new data, it'll resolve that. We can choose exactly what it does with the properties or the whole object, whatever we want to do. To try this out, go ahead and add a new entity to your data model. I'll do it now. I'll rename this thing to be wizard. Now we're going to add one attribute here, <clears throat> the name, which is a string. Now, with the wizard selected, go ahead and bring up the data model inspector over here. And you see there's a whole field here for constraint. So it says no content by default, that's fine. Press plus, and you'll see what slides in says comma separated properties. That's how you add constraints, A comma B comma C comma D, whatever you want to, with your attribute names. So you can go ahead and select this thing now, here, hopefully being well. Go okay, on, there we go. And then add in new attribute names instead. For us, I'm gonna say name. Our name attribute must be unique, like that. Now occasionally Xcode doesn't save model editor changes properly, so press Command S just to make sure it saved those changes. So we've said that the name of our wizard must be unique. And now over to content view. Let's hide this bar on the right and write a little bit of code. We'll say, uh, bring in the environment key for our managed object context, var mock, then a fetch request with a sort descriptors of an empty array, like that, with var wizards being a fetched results of wizard. Like that. And now in our body, we're gonna say, when it builds it, there we go, uh, we'll say there is a v stack inside there's a list of our wizards and we'll use id of self use the whole wizard because it's hashable with one wizard coming in and we'll say text wizard.name nil coalescing unknown below the list we'll add a button that has the text add and when that's pressed we'll make a new wizard attached to our current context moc and make the wizard's name equal to Harry Potter. So the same name every time. Below that, we'll add a save button to save our context. So we'll say do try mock.save, catch any errors that occur, and just print out error.localized description. Then press Command R to build and run our code and give it a try. So we've said here, there's a list of all our wizards, with each one uniquely showing in there, that's fine. We've said there's a button for add, giving the same name every single time. And there's a button for saving, down here. Whenever it's pressed, save, otherwise printing error out, out here. It's throwing errors up because Xcode's being unhelpful, but it is fine, trust me. Um, so we've got this code working nicely here, but we're always writing out the same name. We're always writing out Harry Potter every single time, and we've said really clearly, that's a constraint. We shouldn't have duplicate wizard names in here. And so hopefully when our thing attaches, any minute now, come on, you can do it. There we go. Here's our empty list. I'll press add, and there's Harry Potter. So it's showing one wizard. I press add again, it slides in. There's two Harry Potters now, three, four, five, and so forth, or as many as you want to. So we can add as many as we want. The constraints aren't being enforced yet, but when I press save, it will say, whoops, I could not do that. I refuse to do that. It's spotting a collision and saying, sorry, I can't save that many Harry Potters. It's not allowed. It's unique. 
Now, if you wanted to save those changes, if you said, no, actually, I, I need this to, to save, fine. We can do that by telling Core Data how to resolve the constraint problem. Because right now it sees two Harry Potters and says, well, it sees, it sees 12 Harry Potters, how many that is, right? And goes, sorry, I, j I just can't do that. I refuse to save. We can tell it what to do. We can modify our data controller over here. We load our storage up. If we fail to load, fine, just bail out. But if we're still here, it means we'll load it correctly. What do you want to do? In our case, we'll say, get our container, get our view context and set its merge policy. How to merge constraint problematic code with NS merge policy, merge by, there's two options here. We're going to choose merge by property object trump, like that. And now running the code again, let's see what happens. So I'll press add many times, there we go. And press save, bang. They all go away, only one Harry Potter. So what we're saying here is we're asking Core Data to merge its objects based on their properties, to decide which ones to overwrite based on the version it has in its database and the new version we have. And so it'll try and do the right thing. It'll produce a new object by merging properties of the old and new together. As you can see, in practice, before save, as many Harry Potter as you want, but as soon as you press save, now the merge policy kicks in. It'll make sure the constraints enforced, only one unique name per wizard, bang, only one Harry Potter.